Hello serverless people, Enrico here. Welcome to another video about Lambda function. In particular, we will focus on explaining in details the execution context of a Lambda function. Understanding what the execution context is, is essential to comprehend how Lambda behaves and how we can leverage to improve its performance. All right, let's get started. All right, the life cycle of the ex execution environment includes the following phases, init phase, invoke phase, and shutdown phase. In the init phase, Lambda creates or unfreeze an execution environment with the config resources. It downloads the code and all the layers needed. It's split into three sub phases, extension init, runtime init, and function init. The next phase is the invoke phase. In this phase, obviously the Lambda function invokes the function handler, which is actually the code that you write. And after the function has completed, Lambda prepares to handle another function invocation, right? So if we have like sequential invocation, the invoke phase is called sequentially. Then we have the shutdown phase. The shutdown phase is triggered if the Lambda function does not receive any invocations for a period of time. In the shutdown phase, Lambda sends a shutdown event to each extension and runtime and then shut down the environment. Let's now analyze each of these phases and understand how we can leverage those. So the init phase is split into three tasks. The extension init, runtime init, and function init. The extension init starts all the extensions, right? So the extension is like a concept that's been introduced a couple of years ago and basically let you register either internal or external extension to your Lambda function. Extension can be like a service from a third-party company uh, that can add like a login, for example, on your Lambda function. You have really like loads of um, extensions that you can add on your Lambda function. I'm not gonna focus on this during this video, but just so you know that you can add uh, extensions to your Lambda function. Then we have the runtime in it, which basically bootstrap the runtime of the Lambda function. And then the last one is the function in it, which basically run the function static code. We have to remember that the init phase is limited to 10 seconds. And if, if all the three tasks do not complete within the 10 seconds, Lambda is going to retry the init phase from the beginning. So after the function init sends the uh, next signal, it's time to go to the next phase, which is the invoke phase. All right, so here we are on the most important phase, which is the invoke phase, which is basically where your code is executed, right? So in this phase, of course, the function executes your code and executes all the all the extension that's been uh, registered during the init phase. The function timeout setting is the duration that you set on the config on the configuration of the Lambda function, and the duration is the sum of all the invocation time, so runtime plus extensions. Okay, the invoke phase ends after the runtime and all the extension signal are done by sending the uh, next API request, which is here as you can see from this uh, graph. So if the Lambda function crashes or there is like a timeout because you hit the function timeout, let's say, let's say you set a 10 seconds timeout and the Lambda function is running more than 10 seconds for like different reasons. It can be you calling a third party service and it's not replying to your function. So basically you hit the limit, Lambda is gonna reset the execution environment. The reset behaves exactly as a shutdown phase, which we're gonna see on the next slide. But what happens is that Lambda shuts down the runtime then it sends like a shutdown event to all the extensions that have been registered on the init phase. Remember that uh, during a reset, Lambda does not clear the, tem the temporary directory, which is like slash TMP. And this behavior is of course consistent with the uh, shutdown phase. So now that we have like uh, mentioned the shutdown phase, let's see actually what happens during the shutdown. All right, and here we are on the last phase, which is the shutdown phase. And um, this is basically when the function is shutting down the runtime and the extension. So what happens is that it sends a shutdown event to each of the uh, extensions that have been registered and also sends the shutdown event to the runtime. The entire shutdown phase is capped at two seconds. If the runtime of the extension does not respond, Lambda is going to send a sick kill signal. Now, this is like a very important concept that we have to remember. So after the function and all the extension have been completed, Lambda maintains the ex execution environment for some time in anticipation of another function invocation. So actually what happens is that the execution environment is frozen by Lambda. So when the function is invoked again, Lambda is going to unfreeze the environment for reusing. This basically means that on our Lambda function, we can reuse the execution environment for different things. 
basically the objects declared outside the functions remain initialized, providing like uh, additional optimization. Let's think about uh, a database connection. If we establish the connection outside the function runtime, we're going to have the database connection already connected when we have the next invoke phase. This, of course, improves a lot the uh, execution time of the Lambda function. And actually, if you're interested in this, I made a video on five ways to improve your Lambda function execution time. Another point is that for each execution run, we have like a temporary directory, like up to 10 gigabytes of space we can use. And this directory remains when the execution environment is frozen. So basically you have a temporary cache that can be used for multiple invocation, right? So you can, you can basically add code to check if the cache has the data that you need and use this at your advantage. You basically have a cache for free on your Lambda function. And then of course, like background processes and callbacks that were not finished during that invocation can be resumed on the next invocation because what happens is that the execution environment is uh, unfreeze during the um, init phase. So it's important to uh, mention that when you write your function code, you need to remember these three points because you don't, you don't have to assume that Lambda is gonna you know, automatically reuse the execution context, but you have to add checks to see if the temporary directory is uh, defined, for example, or um, if the object that you declare are actually defined. So in this way, so you, you always have to have like resilient code that assumes both cases when the, uh, say the objects are defined or the connection to a database has been established or when not. So remember this when you code, when you write your code for the Lambda function. Right, and that's all. To, to summarize, we have three phases, init, invoke, and shutdown. And it's important to remember that the execution contents can be reused between those phases. Of course, we don't have to assume that it is reused all the time, but we can write the code and optimize our Lambda function knowing these features. I hope the video was useful. Let me know if you have any questions on the uh, comments and see you on the next one.